my name is Ashley. Um, I am 28 years old and I'm originally from Austin, but I've been in New York for about seven years now. I am an attorney in-house at a hedge fund and I work with AI a lot. I am very, 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 very Caucasian, like 98% from Wales. <laughs> Oh, we did like a deep, my mom did a DNA thing and it literally came back 98% well, so it's not even a joke. My overall system of choice right now is going to be the PlayStation 4. So my secondary system is going to be the Switch right yeah. now. Going for it when you're in like, um, fierce deity. <laughs> I would consider myself old school RPG style gamer, so I'm really, really in want a story when I'm gaming. And I am generally going to be playing, you know, Zelda, God of War, uh, Mass Effect, anything that has like a real narrative behind it. See this controller? Well, we'll get back to that later. Welcome to another episode of How Do You Game? Thank you, Ashley, for having us. Her entire house okay. is accented with gaming, but she manages to find a balance where nothing clashes with each Star other. Star Wars, Legend of Zelda. PlayStation controller chargers. She is ready to game. Bow soundbar. This awesome Pokeball accessory. Don't know what it does. In terms of Switch chargers. Wait a minute. Uh, Alexa, add to cart. Okay. Ashley's setup is amazing. Kind of Every, up. and I mean Soka. everything, is well organized. X-Wing. The Legend of Zelda. Word. Okay, back to this control. It's so beautiful. Wow. I really have to get wow. one of these. Okay. I mean, look at it. Alexa. Wake up, go to work, come back home, grab dinner, and then throw myself on this couch. Depending on how tired I am, to either, you know, just super veg out and watch, uh, like, Netflix with my boyfriend and collect Pokemon. <laughs> so what is your favorite Zelda? So my favorite is gonna be Ocarina of Time, but my non-Ocarina of Time favorite is probably Wind Waker. Yeah. And Mostly everyone, for the music. Everyone was terrified when they saw him as a tune. Yeah. And yeah, they were yeah. like, no, this is not and gonna like, work. Cell shading, boo. I got a sound bar, so now I have surround sound, which also is stressful. <laughs> Cause you'll hear things coming behind you. I have broken a controller that way. <laughs> because I'm just like, ah! <laughs> so. Right now is the little Pokeball that I got for the Pikachu. Because you literally can throw it, you can like feel your Pokemon in it. And when you set it on the dock to charge, it makes the sound like you're in the Poke Center, so it's like dun 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 dun. So that people walk in and go like, oh, this is like a Pinterest board. That's why I have like all my little like mishmash of knickknacks here. And then of course, like I'm always gonna have my nerdy coffee table books and a controller out, and you know, I've gotta be ready to game at any point. I've got my Zelda puzzle collection, which is ever growing, and I do actually complete all of the puzzles. Star Wars, but mostly Ahsoka toy toy collection. So again, like books and movies and stuff like a normal bookshelf might have. All of my Funko Pops, specially curated so as to not have to buy every Funko Pop ever. And then my collection of Conans. <laughs> so in this area is all gaming things. You know, we've got charging docks on both sides. The most used consoles right here in the middle. The Switch, which is always always being used in some capacity, and then the PlayStation, those are the two most used. So over here I've got all of my favorite movies, of course in chronological order, so like this is like all the Star Wars mapped out chronologically. My Nintendo shelf down here with all of the Nintendo games from like my entire life. The original Zelda and the gold cartridge, all the arts and artifacts, all of the collectible Zelda items. I even have from Brooklyn, <laughs> this little candle maker that made a Hyrule Field candle, and it does make you play or feel like you're in Hyrule Field. I would always light it while playing Zelda. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, that is adorable. <laughs> to carry the flow of nerdiness in here, because it's not going to stop. It has to hit every room. <laughs> so I've got all the plushes, and they all like make noise. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bowser roars. And then my personal fave, of course, is Pikachu, because... This actually glows in the dark. <laughs> and will show, like, the battle between Luke and Kylo Ren. So, like, when I go to sleep, I get a completely different... a completely different view, which is very exciting. And, like, this is a little light-up Pikachu. So it's basically, yeah, anything that you think would belong in a bedroom. 
made nerdy. <laughs> so my t a lot of things as you have seen. <laughs> but my two biggest collection focuses, pretty much every Zelda book material um, outside of the mangas because I don't really care about the mangas. I don't know who cares about the mangas. It's got all of the, the books. guys. Yeah. Sorry, manga people. Um, <laughs> every version of every Zelda. Like, oh, you've been oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I got them, and I have Zelda, Zelda too. too. Yeah, I know. Oh. I know. It's, I think Zelda like they started the whole gold cartridge thing. Yeah, they did. Oh yeah, yeah they yeah. definitely did. Like yeah. I've got the Majora's Mask one. Yeah. And then. The character Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars, like anything that's ever had Ahsoka associated with it, I've collected that. Why? It's not a spaceship? No! It is! It's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen and I love it. What do you love about her? She is smart. She doesn't like take the Jedi Council shit when they're being dogmatic. She ends up leaving the Order, but then she's also like staying true to the light, so it's like pretty fantastic. Uh, oh no, they're red right now. <laughs> What? Yeah. Billy D. Williams is your cousin in real life. <laughs> IRL. Like, yeah. cousin, cousin? Cousin, cousin. I started gaming, like, as soon as I knew what gaming was, like, five years old. My mom actually came home with an N64, just kind of half it was like, I found this weird thing, like, almost like picked it up at a garage sale, kind of, and was like, here, play this, uh, Mario 64. The one that I literally saved up my every penny for was uh, GameCube. I loved that thing. I still have it. They had a um, attachment where you could like put a screen on it and it was like three inches thick and it would like attach onto the top of the GameCube and it came with a whole carrying case and I was just obsessed with it. Like I would carry my GameCube around everywhere and that made it like semi portable and it was, yeah, I love that thing. Given unlimited time, I could easily just destroy a 60 hour game. Everything is 100% except the Koroks now. I'm not gonna do it again. You know what the prize is if you get all the Koroks, right? No. It is a golden shit. A golden shit. Like doo doo? Yeah. They hand you a, a golden poo pestu. It's basically Nintendo saying, why did you spend all these hours? It's basically Nintendo it's like a trolled us really hard. Yeah. Especially if it's something that is really involved narrative. Like I will play it until I pass out or think, oh, I haven't eaten in 30 hours. <laughs> if I, you know, didn't have a job or other humans to interact with, I could go like all day. This was, this was me from like four years ago when I got published. Oh snap! So like before I even had my JD. <laughs> what, what is it? Juris Doctorate. So it's the doctorate. It's it's the law degree. Did you, you pass it the first time? I did, luckily. Oh. It was in the Javits Center, by the way. When the test starts, they literally like lower those like electronic doors and like lock you in, and it's like the Death Star closing, and it's the, one of the scariest moments. My life. So I use it a lot as a stress reliever or something to like do with my boyfriend. So we like to have a lot of dates in where we're just like playing old video games or being really bad at Diddy Kong racing, which is weirdly so hard now, especially playing it on a big screen. So it's really excellent. <laughs> um, it was my white whale for a long time. I couldn't find it anywhere. It came out in like 2012. I had a Google alert set out for it and it popped up on eBay and I got into a bidding war with someone. So like whoever you are, haha, I win. And it's not punched. Like when I found it like at all and game, then yeah. like not punched, I was like freaking out and paid a little too much money for it because I just had to have it. For those who may or may not know, when Star Wars produced their original toys, they were made by this like little company called Kenner. And those were like all the ones that they made like starting in 77. Kenner doesn't exist anymore, they got subsumed and... But they made an Ahsoka from the Clone Wars in that style and so when I when I found this I it's just it's my creme de la creme it was my white whale for so long the shelves are the main thing that I do for organization as far as the display items are concerned the consoles and games that aren't on display I always have them in like specific pouches um, or carrying cases or in lunch boxes <laughs> like metal lunch boxes Really everything is in its its own little container or area, according to the shelving knife. <laughs>
to that. It is an original 1977 record of the original soundtrack. I, like even the photos have yellowed a little bit. And that I found randomly in the back of an antique store in Austin, Texas. This is how it was sitting in the pawn, not pawn shop, but like antique store. And I was like, well, there's no way this is from 77, but it is cool and it's in pretty good condition. And then, and they aren't scratched or anything. I actually have played them. Before. Looking at it and flipped it over and was like, oh my gosh, like these are not that easy to get a hold of in this good condition anymore. I immediately like ran up to the register and was like, I'll take it, I don't care what price it is, and luckily they had no idea what the value was, and so I basically got it for like 20 bucks. <laughs> now I'll have it beautifully framed. I always joke at work that my like legal problem solving skills are based on the puzzle solving in Zelda. <laughs> my parents would never buy me the guidebook, so I could never like cheat. So I had to like, I, I beat the water temple organically. <laughs> Like, I had to do that, and so, like, figuring all of those things out, I think, like, gave me an analytical, more analytical mind at a young age and, like, helped me develop, weirdly, my career. And, like, each each side is a different piece of oh, art, so wow. you're, like, filling, so that was, like, three and four. Oh, so this is one and two. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. And two. The one thing that I would actually grab in a fire. <laughs> because of the amount I had to fight for it. And it is the 3DS Majora's Mask Edition. They canceled my pre-order when they oversold them at both Best Buy and GameStop. So I found out that in Brooklyn at the Atlantic Avenue Target, they were gonna have six in stock on the day that it went on sale. I actually went the day before and they had them on the shelves and I tried to sneak one out and they wouldn't sell it to me because it wouldn't scan. I showed up about 15 hours before the store opened the next day, so like before closing the night before, and I sat in Atlantic Avenue and it was like November and like six degrees outside and I waited for the store to open and as predicted, it was a huge rush. So I knew that all of the consoles were on the second floor of the store and I ran, got onto the escalator and like boxed out all of these guys behind me, ran in and got it and like literally had to like elbow a guy to like make sure that I got this. If, if someone who doesn't know anything about this comes into my apartment, they're just like, oh, you have a lot of like fun trinkets, you know, what are these? And I'll say, you know, it's Star Wars and Zelda. And they're like, oh, you play video games? Like, oh. You have like video game consoles that's so strange you know so I think like the fact that there are packages of what gamers are supposed to look like and so what he does is basically take mathematical logic and like apply it so I work at like a hedge fund and they bring in a lot of like outside people to do like talks so yeah. he was there and gave a talk on it and it's pretty cool yeah you can't be a put together human and be a gamer like I I went to school, I'm an attorney, I did all of these things while also taking breaks to play Zelda. <laughs> and sometimes weekends. <laughs> We're seeing, you know, environments that we wouldn't be able to see before, like everything just just renders beautifully. Like even even finally Nintendo is jumping into the actually making it render well game via Breath of the Wild. I like how happy she looks when playing this too. <laughs> It's so, like, it's just so beautiful. We did, did you get the original Zelda outfit? Oh, yeah. How did you have to get that? How did, how you have did to beat you... all the dungeons. Yeah. Yep. So you have to, like, do the amiibo, like, every day. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Just to I get did all this. three parts? You... Yeah. And, and I've done was... that for all of them. <laughs> See, and, and considering your career, you're <laughs> able to pull all this off. That's super gamer levels. Yeah, this is... <laughs> so I think the current generation has, you know, done quite well. Um, I think that Nintendo sometimes shoots their self in the foot with their trying to be innovative and really differentiate themselves. I think a lot of what they should do is like focus on what you know. Like you know how to make a good game, you know how to make it reach multiple audiences, so you know how to like grab new people and you know how to keep the old because like we're always gonna want the nostalgia factor. As much as people sometimes are like that's too much fan service, like no it's not. <laughs> no it's not. I will take it. Like I'm always here for it. Google's gonna do something. The patent that they just released, they they already have a good VR setup. The fact that they know how to push streaming, they know how to do everything. Like, they are gods. I guess I would like to say, 
be you in gaming. Like, I'm a weird mix of, like, Pinterest board and Zelda and Star Wars. So just always, always just do what you want to do in the moment with gaming. And, like, don't worry about the newest, latest thing or what's cool right now or, you know, that you have to be playing Overwatch and Fortnite and things like that. Just, just, just do it. Just do what you love, man. Do what you love. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so, PlayStation game. So, PlayStation game, what immediately pops up is Diablo, and on the original, the very first PlayStation. Nintendo game. Zelda. Ocarina of Time. And, um, yeah, so in 64. Uh, Xbox game. Mass Effect. And that was, I guess, 360 is where that started. So. And health game. Ooh. Link Between Worlds, oddly enough. So that was 3DS. And uh, arcade game. Galaga. And, yeah, just on, like, its own Galaga system. I love Galaga. <laughs> Will we see you at a game launch one day? Absolutely, especially if it's Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs>